Hi, I'm Andrew Watson from Creative Guitar Studio. Welcome to another edition of my weekly guitar blog. Uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, I just wanted to mention, you know, before I get on to the questions uh, as we usually do here that uh, uh, cover, I wanted to mention that on Monday, uh, January 17th, I am going to be posting my first podcast. I've had a lot of people sending in emails asking me to create an MP3 podcast uh, series uh, on the website, uh, something that they can maybe download to their iPods or their MP3 players. So I will be doing that, and the very first one will be coming out on Monday, January 17th, 2011. So be sure to check that out. It uh, will be up on Monday, and uh, there'll be a post on my website, as well as I'll make a Twitter announcement and a Facebook announcement. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'll talk about it a little bit later as well. Let's get on to the questions, though. That's why we're here. The first one comes from Alex, and he's writing in, what is the best way to develop my ear for, for transcribing chords? I can transcribe melodies and solos just fine, but I have a hard time with jazz chords. Do you have any advice? Uh, well, basically, you know, uh, the, with any kind of ear training work, I'm a huge believer in singing, you know, when you're practicing uh, through scales, uh, you know, or arpeggios. So let's say, you know, when it comes to chords, uh, what I'd highly recommend is doing a lot of singing work with arpeggios. You know, let's say if I'm gonna sing through a, a G major seven, and you don't have to sing, you know, the do re mi sort of deal. You can just sing, uh, even you can just hear, use the word da. You know, you just go da 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 da. da you know, and work on matching pitch. You know, sing both with your guitar, sing without the guitar. Um, also, you know, when you're transcribing, though, just to kind of lean the question more specifically to what you wrote in about transcription. You know, you have to remember that. In following bass notes, you'll usually get your root of your chord nailed first. So find that bass note and then start testing and operating. You know, you'll get a, a handle on when something's major or when something's minor or diminished, I'm sure, very quickly. But it's finding out just that major or minor color. So my recommendation all the time to folks is, you know, find the uh, bass note, test out and operate major sounds, <clears throat> dominant sounds and minor sounds. And eventually what will happen is, you know, you'll just land on it and you'll just go, oh man, yeah. Yeah, that's a dominant chord or, or heck that's definitely a major seven chord um, you can also do um, <clears throat> a test of trying to target out that top note you know so <clears throat> let's see for instance if you had a, a G major seven chord you know try to find that note on top you know whatever the voicing is and you know by basically listening for the uppermost note as well as the bass pitch, uh, that's gonna give you probably the best clue to the most specific uh, layout of notes for the voicing. So that should help you quite a bit. Uh, that's essentially in a nutshell what's going on with that stuff. Uh, now, next question I'm gonna go to <clears throat> is here from Adam. He says, I've been playing about a year now and I'm slightly concerned with my picking technique. I use economy picking uh, it's just what felt natural when I started playing scales. Should I change to strict alternate picking? I raised the question with my guitar teacher and he said I should make the change. Uh, after eight months of lessons, you can imagine my frustration. It seems like I'm gonna be relearning every scale. Your advice would be greatly appreciated. Cheers from Down Under, Adam from uh, Sydney, Australia. Uh, P.S. Do you think it would be wise to consider looking for a new guitar teacher? Well, you know what, let's just address your first question there because when it comes to, I get lots of questions about picking, you know, and. You know, you can, of course, uh, think of picking as uh, wherever you begin from and you have a certain technique like a lot of people do learn alternate so in a way you know you are kind of fortunate that you've already de developed economy but you know what I'm usually teaching around here is try to get as many picking uh, approaches together in your playing as possible so let's say you can do economy picking well may then maybe branch out and start working on your alternate um, then maybe start w working on something like maybe also work on all down picking you know you get a really punchy you know pop kind of tone out of the string like that uh, another uh, aspect is sweep picking another concept is uh, you know uh, and if you're not familiar with sweep picking by the way it's where you rake the pick across the guitar string so you just kind of sweep across you know and there's a major minor chords you know there's all kinds of you know colors you can get out of that it's a very good technique to learn but then there's also um, hybrid picking I was going to mention too you know where you pluck a, a set of strings sort of starting to some kind of a pattern with your right hand. I've got a couple of good uh, videos on my Creative Guitar Studio YouTube channel that you can check out. I teach exactly the you know, techniques involved in developing hybrid picking. So highly recommend checking those out. But then there's, of course, you know, you can put the pick down and you can start doing finger style, you know. 
and get all kinds of fingerstyle concepts together. And fingerstyle is beautiful. I mean, it's a great style to learn. You can also make good cash doing fingerstyle. You got to remember, you know, you're by yourself and you get the full paycheck when you do fingerstyle guitar. So a great way to make money in the summer, let's say doing wedding gigs or whatever. But you know, um, the other one that you'd mentioned uh, is about finding a new guitar teacher. Well, just because this guy is saying, hey, branch out and try alternate, um, and hopefully he's kind of coming across that way. Maybe, uh, you know, he's not, but you know, I think that's what he's trying to say to you is, you know, you've, you've got that one down, now try to do another. And then maybe later he can say, well, try and do hybrid next and then try and hear you know here's an example of sweet picking or you know what I mean so I think he's just trying to expand your overall knowledge base uh, so uh, you know I usually tell people you know don't uh, you know fire your guitar teacher unless I mean Jesus, if I've had uh, people tell me all kinds of kind of wacky stories about people, you know, that they get together with to take guitar lessons from, and maybe that, you know, it's like usually the the sort of the craziness is usually when like you can really tell that that person probably shouldn't be teaching guitar. Maybe they have really a high highly uh, lacking of skills, or maybe they uh, they just uh, I, that's <laughs> that's probably the wrong way to put it. They have a low uh, level of ability, maybe is a better way to put it. So let's say they're not a great player or teacher, you know, yeah, f fire them. Uh, if they're not um, really communicating with you about, you know, lessons and in the class, like I've heard stories of guitar teachers just kind of complaining about their week or, you know, or whatever to students. And I mean, that's just kind of loopy. So, I mean, yeah, fire your guitar teacher, maybe, you know, for that. Um, <clears throat> But uh, or if they're not doing what you want to do or you just find it's really poor instruction or maybe if you really kind of met somebody and you took lessons for a few weeks and you realize, man, I don't get along with this person whatsoever. They're just a completely, uh, you know, incompatible uh, personality thing with you. So, you know, those are the reasons usually that I suggest to uh, give the guitar teacher the boot, you know. Um, but anyway, let's get onwards here to the uh, to the next question. This one's from Ben, uh, and he's writing in here, I've been playing guitar for over two years on my own. I wanted to see if you've got any specific tips for self-teaching, like things, especially, you know, things to avoid, how to correct myself and catch my bad habits, uh, etc. Um, well, uh, basically, you know, I'm not, I, you probably heard me say this before, I'm not a huge fan, really, of self-teaching. I know there's a lot of stuff on the net, you know, and I'm doing these YouTube lessons and you know, there's up team dozen other people doing YouTube lessons and having websites on guitar instruction, but I'm kind of a big believer on having a teacher, you know, somebody who's really skilled and really knows their stuff, you know, easy to get along with and is a good communicator. You just can't beat that, you know. I, I mean, self-taught is sometimes limiting unless you're very, you know, highly skilled in another instrument. Like look at Eddie Van Halen, for instance. I mean, he was highly skilled in piano and, and, and in a similar way, um, uh, he was just at the top of my mind here. Uh, I forgot his uh, name. Uh, Tony McAlpine. Sorry. So, you know, look at Tony McAlpine. The guy was, you know, thoroughly skilled in piano, like Eddie Van Halen, you know, and then they kind of moved over to guitar. So you see that. I mean, I've even had students come in uh, in classes here where they were like really thoroughly taught in something like violin or whatever, and then they get onto guitar and like, you know, I, I barely have to go over very much with them. I mean, I could just kind of showing them different techniques and stuff because they kind of know all their theory and, you know, everything's coming together very quickly. So, you know, there's that exception to it. But I mean, if you have no background musically, I think it's really important to, uh, to have a teacher. Uh, but, you know, that said and done, I guess, you know, the other side of it is possibly uh, picking up um, books, you know, and going through some kind of a, a, a chapter by chapter program. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there where you can kind of do a, a learning um, curve where they start off, you know, here's the basics on uh, theory reading and rhythm guitar and chord changes and stuff. You know, there's uh, some Hal Leonard stuff out there that's pretty decent.